So in today's video, we discuss the seven genetic health risks that all vegans need to know and understand. Roll the titles. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Before I jump into the video, just a quick reminder that I'm now offering the SIBO organic acid stool tests and consult via my website. So if you have any health or digestive problems, then consider taking these tests as they will provide a lot of very detailed information upon which you can start making informed decisions and then start getting your health back on track. And on that bombshell, to the video. So today I'm quickly going to run you through some of the main genetic polymorphisms that can cause significant health issues in vegans. Now all of the seven genes that I discussed today and many others can very simply be analysed using 23andMe and then running the data through websites such as Prometheus which will tell you where some of your health risks lie. So the whole process costs about £100 and it gives you some super useful information. Now this is not a sponsored video and I'm certainly not placing any affiliate links anywhere. I'm just providing you with the necessary information so you know why this test could be beneficial to you. Now there are approximately 57,000 gene polymorphisms in the body. So in this video, I want to give you the seven which are most applicable to vegans. Now before I run you through each of the seven, I just need to explain to you what a polymorphism is. So a polymorphism is simply a variation in the sequence of DNA that alters the function of a gene and they can be both good and bad in some situations. Polymorphisms are different from genetic mutations which are permanent alterations in DNA. And it should also be stated that gene polymorphisms often occur in sizable proportions of populations. So if we first start with omega-3 and the gene polymorphisms associated with the delta-6 desaturase gene, which is also known as FADS2. So FADS2 has three respective genotypes that affect conversion efficiency rates. So you have GG, which means that you are a poor converter, AG is an intermediate converter, and AA, which is a high converter. Now I'm sure you are all fully aware that there are three types of omega-3s important to human health and these are ALA, EPA and DHA. So when I'm talking about how good a converter you are, I am simply referring to how effective you are at converting the short chain ALA into the longer chain EPA and DHA. Now polymorphisms in the delta-6 desaturase gene are fairly common and depending on the type of polymorphism that you have, it can either increase or decrease the conversion rate of ALA into the longer chain omega-3 fatty acids, EPA and DHA. Now, if you have a polymorphism that causes an increased production of EPA and DHA, then happy days. But there are obviously vegans who are taking their flaxseed on a daily basis and they are simply not converting sufficient amounts of ALA into EPA and DHA. Now, for those with low levels of EPA and DHA in the body, they are at an increased risk for many different diseases. So you obviously need to know if you have the polymorphism. Now, don't panic if you have these types of polymorphisms. You can simply supplement with things like microalgae oil, which is rich in both EPA and DHA. The next area that I want to cover off is MTHFR mutations, and this is actually a cluster of polymorphisms. So methylene tetrahydrofolate reductase, MTHFR, is a polymorphism that makes it difficult for the conversion of 10 methylene tetrahydrofolate into 5 methylfolate. So 5-methylfolate plays a critical role in helping make methyl groups that help turn on and off genes in your body and this is also known by some as an epigenetic modulator. Now if you have a genetic mutation around MTHFR it becomes difficult for you to convert dietary folate into 5-methylfolate and as a result homocysteine won't be converted into methionine at an efficient rate and therefore your homocysteine levels will remain elevated. Homocysteine is associated with many vascular diseases and new growing research is associating homocysteine with certain types of cancers. With MTHFR, approximately 40% of the population is heterozygous for RS180-1133, meaning they have a 40% reduced capacity to convert dietary folate into 5-methylfolate. On top of this, 20% of the population have a 70% reduced capacity to convert dietary folate into 5-methylfolate. 
And finally, approximately 10% of the population have a 80 to 90% reduced capacity. So again, it's important that you know if you have a problem in this area. Now, if you do have one of these mutations, then you can simply supplement with 5-methyl tetrahydrofolate in combination with methylcobalamin, which is the active form of B12 in the body. And by supplementing with these, you will largely fix the issues. Next up, we come to mutations around B vitamins. And not too many people have heard of these types of polymorphisms. So firstly, concerning B6, approximately 46% of people are heterozygous for a polymorphism in the gene MBPF3. Now, this type of mutation may mean that you have low levels of B6. And in this situation, you can simply fix the issue by increasing your intake of B6-rich foods, or you can supplement. Next in the B vitamin group is B12, and approximately 49% of populations are heterozygous for polymorphisms in FOOT2. FOOT2 affects the way that B12 is absorbed in the intestines. So if you are somebody who has this type of mutation, then you are best taking B12 in sublingual form. Next up, we come to issues associated with vitamin D. Now, there are a couple of different polymorphisms associated with the CYP2R1 gene. And if you have these types of problems, then it can be difficult for you to convert vitamin D3 into 25-hydroxyvitamin D, which is the major circulating form of vitamin D in the body. So for these people, it may be necessary to supplement with vitamin D so that their levels don't become chronically low. Next up, we come to cholesterol. And if you are a vegan with high LDL cholesterol, despite eating a good clean diet, then you will want to pay attention here. So there is a gene in the body called ApoE, which encodes a lipoprotein in the liver that binds to and transports cholesterol throughout the bloodstream and also brings it back to the liver. Now, approximately 25% of populations have the ApoE4 variant of the gene, which can cause those people to have high levels of LDL in the blood as the LDL is not being returned to the liver. And finally, the last gene issue that I would like to cover off is the FOXO3 gene. Now, this gene is also known as the longevity gene. Humans that have polymorphisms related to expressing more of FOXO3 have a much greater chance of living to 100. Equally, if you're expressing less FOXO3, then you have a decreased chance and likelihood of getting to your late 90s and beyond. So FOXO3 does a number of different things in the body, such as turning on stress resistance, certain antioxidant activity genes, as well as increasing DNA repair. So hopefully from today's video, you can understand the importance of knowing whether you have these polymorphisms in your body. So that's the end of today's video. I hope you all enjoyed. And as always, remember to look after your body because it's the only place you have to live. And I'll see you next time.